All right, guys, so welcome back to another video. Uh, I've had my Mark 8 Fiesta S ST line for a month now. So I'm just, just going to give my thoughts on it, kind of like a review kind of thing, a more sensible video for anyone who might be in the market for a car of this type or this car in specific. Just giving my thoughts. I've done one and a half thousand miles, might be nearer 2,000 miles in a month. So that, I don't think that's going to happen every every month. It's just because I've had so much to, to, to do. But I mean, for a first month, I've definitely got to learn the car. So yeah, hopefully you, you enjoy. Um, hopefully this helps you if you're in the market, as I said. And let's get on to point number one. It's probably the biggest talking point of the UK at the moment, and that is fuel. What are the fuel prices like in this car? So it's a one litre EcoBoost, so it's got a turbo. They do 100 horsepower, 125, 140. This is the 141. Around town, you get like... 70 miles to the gallon like it is really good around, around town the second you hit fast roads and I'm, I'm going to do a video purely based on fuel after this one the, 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 the second you hit like motorway speeds even though it's got six gears it just drinks fuel you can tell it's a car made for like the city I drive 99% of the time with eco mode on as well, which like limits the power, makes everything more smooth. So it is like a, a more fuel friendly way to drive. And yeah, as I said, around town, perfect. But the second you go quicker than then like town speeds, like as I said, like a dual carriageway or a motorway, it just drinks. So like you can almost see the gauge going down. Maybe that's just me because I've got the most powerful one, even though it is just a tune from the factory, so I don't know if that would affect it, but yeah, that's my per personal experience. If you're just buying it for around town, fuel is perfect, and it's petrol as well. So coming away from the Fabia, it's uh, nice to not have to spend tw 26 pound a litre on fuel. As I said, I've got another video coming purely on fuel. Point no number two is power. Now, as I said, I drive everywhere in eco mode, so it does limit the power. 99% of the time I'm in e eco mode, so I have dri driven it out of eco mode a couple of times, and it definitely does pick up a bit. It's not as fast as the Fabia, but I think the Fabia is more of an aggressive, like it threw you back in your seat, because obviously, because of the torque, this is quite a smooth power curve. And I mean, you're not keeping up with anything. You're not gonna race anything. Going from like 30 to 70, it does pick up nice. I think there's some artificial sound that comes through the speakers, because there's no way like this engine is like, it makes quite a good noise and I, I have a feeling it's coming through the speakers. I might be, be wrong. But yeah, the 140 version has not nice power. It's like enough where you're never gonna get in trouble. It's not that that fast. Like you, you won't find yourself speeding. But when it does come to you have to speed up a bit, it can easily. I can't speak on the 125 or the 100 horsepower ones, although I can't imagine they're too fast. I might be wrong, but from my experience, this is like the sweet spot. So any less, and I would start to think, is it worth it? So my car has got a couple um, optional extras above the standard one, but they all come with cruise, cruise controller standard. I'll tell you something. Once you have a car with cruise control, you can't go back. This has also got active cruise control. So it follows the speed of the car in front up to my set speed. So if they slow down, this car will slow down. It's also got a um, lane assist, which I believe they all come with, even the non-ST lines. I think they all come with the lane assist. So it works best when you're on like a dual carriageway or a motorway. Around town, it doesn't really work. It essentially stops you or tries to prevent you from creeping over the white lines into the other lanes. You've got the Apple CarPlay, which isn't on at the moment, but uh, it's not just Apple Car CarPlay, that's only if you plug it in your phone, it is also just like a radio, like every car. But it's a really, really good like, screen to touch, it's quite quick, no real lag. The steering wheel's quite nice and chunky, and obviously I have got the heated steering wheel, so when it has been cold, which hasn't been for a while, this is a must. Now, obviously, I am coming from like quite basic cars. Like the Skoda had nothing. The, the Clio had as many optional extras as they can, but it's still quite a basic car. So I might be like over exaggerating the car because I have nothing to base it off. But if this is like your first car, like this is an incredible car. And this is my fourth car and I'm still happy with it. All the, all the features, like the way it drives, it drives effortless. Like take the power out of it. The way it just goes over bumps and like, it's just effortless. Like it is a really, I think all new cars are probably the same, the same now. It's just effortless. Like it's so easy to drive. And that is, that is what, what my aim was. Something where I don't have to stress about like every single bump 
like other cars, the Skoda. Now the final part, oh, I've got to get out of the car. The final part is the looks of the car. Now this is a subjective thing, uh, each one to their own of course. I think the car looks beautiful. I think the back, it just looks nice. It could do with spaces probably, but at the end of the day, this is my everyday car and I promise myself I'm not modifying it. The front is my fav my favorite. The he headlights, you, I, I always come away when you can't see them. I mean, you, you can kind of see them. The headlights are my favorite part about, about the car. I just think it is such a pretty car and like, I know it's just a Ford, it's just a Fiesta, but I just think they're such nice cars. Obviously, this is the non-X and I actually prefer the non-X rims. I think the rims on the X are a bit too big, a bit too like overkill. I love the spoiler, how it like flicks. I love like the, the little touches, like it says Ford in there, which I can't lie, I've only just seen as I was coming past. Obviously the ST line has got, got, got like the honeycomb down there. Then it's also got the honeycomb front grill. I just think that they are very pretty cars. Don't like some of the colors. I think white looks a bit too like understated, even though white is what I wanted. I specifically didn't want a black car. But I saw this and I was like, do, do you know what? It just is quite a pr pr pretty car. So yeah, uh, that's my one month re review on the Fiesta. Coming from a 20 year old youth who um, didn't actually want this specific car, but saw it and I fell in love. And I'll probably keep it for six months to a year. I, I promise myself I'm not go going through cars like I have been. That being said though, the ST is looking quite tasty, so I, I can't promise I'm not gonna upgrade to it. But as of now, I am just enjoying this car and I mean, it is enough. I just always want more, uh, that is my problem. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Um, I don't know, maybe it was just cool to watch or it's actually been informative. Like and subscribe, comment any suggestions or improvements and hopefully I'll see you again. Cheers.